Oh, I'm recording. Hey there guys, what's up, Steven here. And today I'm gonna to actually be doing a smart video on the channel and I know that you're probably like, whoa, what? What parallel universe I just traveled to? A smart video? <laughs> but seriously though, this is actually going to be a smart video on the channel for once. So uh, yeah, here we go. So, today we're gonna to be talking about Atari Inc, Atari Co, Atari Company, Atari dot uk i don't even know today we're going to be talking about atari company now whenever somebody asks somebody hey man did you ever play atari whenever you were younger that obviously means that they are not that obviously means that they are not educated in video games so today we is going to be talking about atari what is atari what makes atari tick like a clock Anyways, so, um, yeah, so let's just come over here and over here. Now, this is Atari. Do you know this logo? Because I do. Now, I'm just get away. I'm fly away. So that's the Atari logo. Now, a lot of people don't really know much about Atari, so uh, today we're going to be talking about it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. The original Ontario Corp. Incorporated was founded in 1972 by Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney. It was the pioneering age of arcade games, and there was Atari leading the charge. So, uh, right about this time, a lot of people, you know, they loved arcade games. But then Atari came around and they started revolutionizing the entirety of the gaming industry, creating stuff like the Atari 2600 and Pong. The Atari 2600 was one of the greatest consoles ever created by Atari and still holds up today as one of the most innovative consoles ever created. This is a picture of Pong. Isn't it beautiful? I... Uh, uh, oh my god! No, please, please, please! For those of you who don't know, that was E.T. for the Atari 2600. And look at this rating on IGN. 2.5. Painful. That would describe this game. Alright, that's enough talking about the bad games. Let's talk about some good ones. Some good ones like Defender 2. Berserk. Uh, Jungle Hunters. Raiders of the Last Ark. And Asteroids. You could forget about that one. These were games that changed what we thought about the gaming industry. These are games that entertained people. These are games that made it into the top lists. Without these games, guess what? There would be no Nintendo. There would be no Sega. There would be no Microsoft or Sony Battles, Xbox One versus PS4. It wouldn't exist. At least not the way that it is now. Atari was a company full of innovators, full of people that wanted to change what we thought about the world. They did it great. Now sure, it may look like a mess of pixels and bad AI, but guess what? That's entertaining. That's fun. People today would want better and better and better graphics. Back then, people were happy with this. Anyways, this isn't an argumentative essay. This is a social studies fair project. And if you aren't here for a social studies fair, you're here watching a YouTube video. Me talking about Atari. It's fun. So, anyways. Yeah. Let's... This is the most beautiful of them all. This is a brand new polished arcade pong cabinet. It was developed by Atari Incorporated. It was designed by Alan Alcorn, and it was released November 29th. And it has no date of being taken out of the arcade, so apparently you could still find it somewhere and go play some pong. Here's Pong's successor. It was the Atari 2600, the greatest Atari console ever made. The manufacturer was Atari Inc. It was, um, it costed 199 US dollars. Um, it was released September 11th, 1977. Um, uh, yeah. It sold 30 million units, and it was discontinued January 1st, 1992. GG. Now, here we have the Atari 5200. It was manufactured by Atari Inc. It was available November 1982, and um, it was discontinued um, the 21st of May 1984. Only sold 1 million units, 
And, well, let's just say this. It sucked. Yeah. There isn't really much more to say about this one. All right, now, here we go. We're almost at the end. So here we have the uh, Atari 7800. Um, it was manufactured by Atari Inc. in January of 1986. It cost $140 compared to, uh, well, $199 of the uh, 2600 It was discontinued January 1st of the same year, and it only sold $3.77 million, still better than the Atari 5200 in every way possible. All right, so next we have the Atari XE video game system. It was again manufactured by Atari Corporation. It is a home video game console slash personal computer because it was also compatible with the Atari 65 XE PC computer thing. It was released in 1987, discontinued in 1992. It costed 199 US dollars. Um, it came with the basic console and a normal package. However, you could buy a deluxe package that came with the joystick, keyboard, and a light gun. Whatever that is. Um, I might look into that. Yay. Here we have the Lynx. It was developed by Epix. It was manufactured by Atari Corporation. It was the first ever handheld game console, being released just a month before the Nintendo Game Boy. It was released October of 1989, and it was, um... It was discontinued in 1994. Um, its price was seven was 179.99, and it was a fourth generation console. Uh, overall, it was pretty good. Uh, we have one more console after this. Last, but still better than the Atari 5200. No, it's not. Uh, we have the Atari Jaguar, manufactured by Atari Corporation. I don't have to keep on saying that. It was released November 15, 1993, and it was discontinued in 1996. It only sold 250,000 units or fewer. Dang, that sucks. Originally, it was supposed to go up against the uh, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and the Panasonic 3DO. However, it ended up going up against the next generation Sega Saturn and original PlayStation. It could not cope with it. Poof! It just turned into a toilet. So that thing on the top of it looks like a toilet bowl. All that is is that is a Jaguar CD. That was basically a CD-ROM uh, drive that gave it, I think it was like 15 to, I think it was like 10 to 15 FPS, half motion video, 32-bit. It wasn't that good. Don't worry about it. So, um, that concludes this. Wasn't that interesting? Um, this is probably <laughs> most definitely the most edited video I have ever made. Holy crap. That was the most amount of editing I've ever done. This is like 3, 5, 16? No. I think about 5 days. So yeah, um, this is something. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video. And, um, yeah. This is Steven12. Pixel Geeks. Anyways, um, so yeah, if you learned something, go down, like, subscribe, tell me what you learned, if you want me to do more of this kind of stuff, tell me as well. Anyway, I'll see you all next time.